thank you everybody um and welcome i know i think we saw nine attendees um so Catherine, laura if you want to keep an eye on that um i can do that as soon as Catherine takes over the slideshow but thank you so much for attending our second virtual open house we're very excited to have you here um, and we hope that we can give you all the information that'll help you kind of in your decision on what to do in the coming year so now one of the second things that I want to talk about is, of course, we get a lot of questions about what to expect for the fall term uh, with COVID-19 happening. So Niagara College is, of course, closely monitoring uh, both current and projected public health measures, um, a whole bunch of different factors. However, we are anticipating a significant increase in on-campus learning for fall 2021. Um, we are optimistic about that. Um, of course, Top of mind is the health and safety of our students, staff, um, faculty, everybody who is on campus. That's the number one priority. So we are going to be providing regular updates as the months go on. Sometime in May, you should be able to expect updates regarding the actual fall 2021 delivery system for many of these programs. Uh, so definitely stay posted on that. There's a link at the bottom of this slide, niagaracollege.ca slash COVID-19. I'll share that in the chat so you can check it out too. Um, but definitely come back and visit that in May so you can find out where your program is going to be in terms of how it's been delivered. But without further ado, I would like to pass things off to Catherine O'Donnell, who's going to tell you guys all about our baking and pastry arts program. Catherine, take it away. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to the Baking and Pastry Arts program. Um, with me here today, I have Chef Peter Storm. Hello. We, we are both... <laughs> The, the two full-time faculty here at Niagara College and we really hope you pick our program. Um, we think it's a amazing program. Um, sorry Ryan it won't let me, um, oh it did. Um, we, we want to walk you today through um, what our program is going all over the place, um, what our program actually involves. And we have a, an amazing, it's an eight month program. Um, becoming a baker, pastry chef, it, you, you don't walk out of the college being that. What our intention is, is to give you the skills that you can actually get an entry job in the industry, um, knowing the proper skills, how to mix, how to bake, how to prove, um, very much the basic skills in our second half of our program. We, it is a little more advanced when we get into the wedding cakes, which we will go through further in the slideshow, the wedding cakes and things like that. So um, both Chef Storm and I have been pastry chefs for over 30 something years each. So we, we both have a lot of knowledge, but we both stay very current in the industry of what's coming up. In your course, there are two um, side courses that are related to our program beyond your math and all of those. And that is the, um, the bake management program. And that is, it's an exciting program. It's an online program now due to COVID. Um, but basically we walk you through how to start a business through your profit and loss, your um, how to name your business, what type of business you want, um, how to staff a business, um, things like that. And at the end of it, you develop a, a website so that if down the road, you decide you want to open your own business, we've kind of given you the basis to have a direction to go into. And I'll let uh, Storm talk about the theory because that's his baby. You know, any good hallmark of a person who works in the culinary field, baking specifically, Bakers are smarter than cooks, I'll tell you that anyways, right? We're, we're a little bit more knowledgeable. Um, you have to have a good foundation of the understanding of what the ingredients are and how they work together to uh, create the formulations that we use to bake whatever product we need. Um, so within the theory course, we will spend time and discuss each ingredient individually as to what it is. And then uh, throughout the course, by the end of the uh, semester, you will be able to um, put all these ingredients together within the bread formulations, cake formulations and whatnot to have a very good understanding as to what each ingredient is doing and why it's in there. In addition to that, it's also the methodologies as to why, um, you know, as to why these, these recipes are actually put together in sequence. Um, the, you know, there's only really a handful of ingredients that we actually use to, to make any product that we have. 
but it's how they're put together, um, the method in which they're put together, the ingredient uh, content and the amount that's in each formulation that dictates what a cake recipe is as opposed to a uh, cookie and a muffin recipe, right? So by the time the, uh, the course is finished, you will have a good understanding as to what each thing does so you can be able to um, create and uh, continue to create throughout your lifetime if you stay, and even if you don't stay within the industry, because this is still a life-based skill as well, you still need to eat. Um, so good course, it, uh, it explains everything that you really need to do. Um, there's a lot of information within it, um, and it's always there for you to use throughout, the, uh, throughout your life, right? So um, that's really the theory in a nutshell. I need like a button, I have a button. Where's my button? Hey, Peter, Catherine. Chefs? Hi. Hi. We were laughing, going like, I need like a interrupt Peter button. Was there an uh, interrupt Peter I button? Know, like <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna uh, somewhat really uh, interrupt uh, Chef Catherine and Chef Peter here uh, for just super quickly. Uh, we want to say hi to everyone, to uh, Ryan, Laura, um, and and everyone on this call, and taking part in our virtual. Um, open house. My name is Craig Udell. I'm the Dean of the Canadian Food and Wine Institute and uh, excited to be um, uh, here on the call for our baking pastry program, which we love so much. And I'll uh, let my other guest here introduce himself. Hi, everybody. It's Gary Torville, the Associate Dean for the Canadian Food and Wine Institute. And again, just want to take a, a brief moment to thank you for joining the call today. Uh, thank you to Ryan and Laura for also being here to support uh, the student questions that will likely arise and to Chef Peter and Chef Catherine for hosting the session. For anyone who uh, loves to learn by doing, this is one of those programs where it is right up your alley. Um, and uh, I know you'll learn a lot about that over the next 40 or so minutes. Uh, we don't want to take up any more time than that, but just want to extend our greetings to you all. And thanks everyone for joining today. Take care, everyone, and uh, uh, we hope to see you here in person soon. Normally on this open house day, we're here at school. Actually, this place is crazy with people uh, um, uh, checking out our facilities, but uh, you'll still get a good uh, look at what we're doing, and uh, we really hope to see you in person here this fall. So anyway, uh, take care, everyone. Um, enjoy your session, and uh, we'll get to talk to you soon. And thanks again uh, to Catherine, Peter, Ryan, and Laura. Thank you. Right. Bye, everybody. Um, okay, so going forward, um, we're a hands-on program, and even during COVID, we have actually been in school since September. Started ten students um, for a while. Now back to one. We have great social distancing. We wear the face guards, and they do work while you're in the kitchen. Um, because so much of what we do going forward in the industry is hands on, you actually have to be able to make it. So everything we make in the program is made from scratch. So you learn how to read a recipe, how to scale a recipe, how to develop the recipe, and then how to proof or bake or decorate at whatever it is you're doing, um, how to finish um, the products and all on campus, which is for me is amazing because um, we get to see you when you start and when you finish and just watching your hand development is um, amazing. So what are you gonna learn if you come? We have actually changed our program in about the last four years into more artisanal, more modern breads, breads that you would see um, in a lot of the, the little bake shop or artisanal bread baking places. So we've tried to stay current with that. We do use the um, Niagara College beer in, from into some of our breads and some of the grains from the college. So we try to tie it into um, our program, the other programs we do. Um, you get about six weeks worth of bread baking in total through the program in different stages so that you do keep up the skill. And we do have one of the best bread ovens out there in our labs. So you have opportunity to learn all of those. You also do a two week wedding cake class during the last um, semester of your program there where this, the photos that are up are students work. So they are previous students from the college's work and you make um, gum paste flowers and you cover a wedding cake and you can learn to paint and pipe and do all those things. 
And then we have an amazing chocolate program, which um, Chef Storm has developed. And I'm going to let him talk a little bit about what you'll learn in um, chocolate. Here you go. Here I go. Okay. Chocolate is a, you know, a hallmark of any person who really is very good baking or, or pastry. This is the difference between a baker and a pastry chef. You know, you start getting into the, the higher end cakes, uh, wedding cakes, uh, higher end decorative um, elements that you start putting on individual desserts or whatnot. But chocolate is a, it, it's the hallmark of the highest level of decorative skill that a person can do. And that goes all the way from uh, producing candies and individual truffles to actually working chocolate and making showpieces and uh, individual uh, decorations that go on different desserts. We make chocolate boxes. You'll learn how to make the fillings. Uh, you'll learn basically how to work chocolate from the beginning. Um, basically all the way through the course there's some chocolate elements put in there. But when you get to that second semester, you have to learn how to properly handle this ingredient. It is a difficult ingredient to use. It's an expensive ingredient to use. Um, so, you know, tempering chocolate, uh, you have to heat it, cool it. You have, to, you have to work it so it's actually gonna work for you. It's one of the ingredients that it actually tells you when to move and why you're moving, right? So we have taken this, we've uh, developed the full two weeks to, um, to give you practice, hands-on technical skill on using this ingredient to produce uh, all sorts of different things from show pieces to um, individual candies to uh, decorative elements and little decorations and, uh, and um, what am I looking for? And truffles as well, right? And then all the truffles are put in chocolate boxes and all sorts of different things. So it's, it's a very good two week in-depth uh, view on what chocolate actually is as an ingredient. Plus you get to eat it too, which is great because you can never have enough chocolate. So that's pretty well it in chocolate. I don't think I missed anything. So then we also, um, when we talk about um, learning from experimenting, we do a big buffet near um, your last week of school. And we have you take all of the recipes that you've learned right from September and put them into your own style. You could take the white cake and turn it into a cake pot. You could take the sponge cake and turn it into a plated dessert. So you use our school recipes, um, but develop it yourself. So you get to learn um, what you have learned, what you haven't learned, what you forgot from the first semester to be able to redo it. We try to take a lot of our skills and do them multiple times so that you do develop the skill because our program is a skill-based program. Um, you have to be able to learn to roll and learn to pipe and learn to work with the ingredients and you don't have to be great at all of it. Um, many, many of the chefs are really great at dessert making or some are fantastic at chocolate making or some are really um, good with wedding cakes, but then others are great with bread. And so we try to give you a little bit of all of that. And then in your buffet time, you actually get to showcase what your skills out of this um, became. And it's actually a lot of fun because um, not right now with COVID, but in the past, we've been able to allow other people to come in, um, view your products, eat your products. Now you'll just be boxing it up and taking it home. And that's one of the other cool parts about the program is, is everything you make, you take home. So it is all yours, um, you know, a few five or 10 extra pounds by the end of the year. Um, but all your bread, all your cakes, everything um, you get to take home. Um, and the most important thing is, is that we want you to come and make lots of mistakes because the mistakes that you make are the learning tools to understanding, going back to what Chef Storm is saying about the theory side of it is understanding that theory now, oh yeah, I did this wrong. When you go out into the industry, then you've already made the mistake at school, you know, already know how to correct it, or you make it again in the industry and go, oh, right, I remember in school I learned this. So mistakes are actually really positive learning tools. So it is it is a course kind of evaluated on, We I personally love it when students make mistakes because those are our teaching tools going forward is to be able to show you why, how come, because you really don't wanna go out there and be making money and then make a mistake and have to tell the, the chef that you've made the mistake because it's money. This way at school, you have a great opportunity to make mistakes. And why why would you choose Niagara College? Um, 
you should choose it because one, it's in one of the best locations in the wine region. You've got brewery, we have distilling programs, and there's opportunities to advance you, your own skills by taking other programs after you've taken ours, or if you've already taken culinary to take our program. When we are not in COVID times, the, the school is very, very involved in so many events down here in Niagara where you get to tag along and you can learn learn skills that we can't actually teach in an eight month program. So you get to expose yourself to a lot of other skills and um, other opportunities. And we are one of the rare colleges that are that participate in a lot of um, events where pastry is actually involved in it. Um, there are, we have in non COVID times, we have bread clubs, we have a chocolate club, we have a decorating club. And that is where us as instructors volunteer our time um, on some weekends to come in and actually give you some advanced skills. And, and we love doing it because it's a time for us to play. And it's things that we cannot teach in the day to day operations of, of our program. With so if you really want to take the course as an overview, it is designed to give people a very good understanding of what happens in the baking world, right? So you come in, um, the course starts with uh, the very basic um, methods and the very basic um, ingredients to produce uh, low-end breads, low-end cakes, low-end pastries. And it progresses throughout the, uh, the entire school year. So you will be able to graduate having a very good understanding that uh, why the ingredients, um, why it's happening, what products we're making, why the products are being made, um, products that are um, classic to the industry as well as or products that are, that are modern to the industry as well. So by the time you run the entire course, you will progress through very basic to very advanced skills as best we can within, like, like Chef Catherine said, an eight month course. It's really a one year course to give you a good understanding of what is common within the baking industry and allow you to produce these products with uh, little to no, uh, to no effort, right? And what you do from that is it's completely down to you. You can, uh, you can work in the industry, you can advance in, in different um, um, schooling as well to, you know, pick and choose. Do you want to be a baker? Do you want to be a chocolate person? Do you want to be a cake person, a uh, bread person? All these things that, you, you know, once you get that basic understanding, you can branch now and go whichever direction your heart desires to go to. And something really important to think about is you don't have to have any skill to take our program when you start. We help develop that skill. So if you think, oh, I don't know how to do anything, we teach you how to scale. We teach you the difference between the, the different flowers. Um, we don't, if you have skill, we just, we enhance your skill. But if you have none to start with, we will help you develop it. So I think that's, um, you don't have to think, oh, I can't do any of these things I've seen on the screen. It's amazing what you can do at the end. And then this is our facility in the last one here. So we have a small chocolate room and in the middle photo there, you can see our tempering machine. We don't teach you to use a tempering machine. We teach you to temper um, by hand so that when you leave our school, if you um, have to temper somewhere and especially if you end up in a restaurant that they won't have machines, you'll actually be able to do it um, completely on your own, which is absolutely amazing. We have a phenomenal room for baking. So we have two bread ovens, plus all these convections that you can see here. So each class has um, eight ovens. So there's plenty of room for all the students. And then on the far right picture is an actual lab. And you know each lab has two people at a station. So there's lots of space for you, um, great social distancing. And then the, the instructors at the front, all of our labs have cameras and um, screens. So no matter where you are in the lab, you would be able to see what's going on. Um, and our labs are actually five hours one day and two four hour classes the following two days. So you're getting a total of 13 hours of um, in lab every single um, every single week. So. Um, 
I am. Um, I'm not sure what else we can really say. We we do believe in our program, and every every time we teach it, Chef Storm and I sit down and make sure that we're very current with the industry. So we're always trying to look at what the industry is doing, and then we can point there. So um, that's really we have your program. And if you have any questions, we're happy to answer the questions and um thank you for attending our um our little session here awesome kath and peter thank you so much for the presentation we really appreciate it let me just we've got a few people who have said good morning i'm just going to go through and uh see if there's been any questions there's a q a here we go tristan has a question about can you tell me more about the bakery management classes. Is that part of the eight month baking and pastry arts program? Okay, yes, um, Tristan, it is. It is, um, we spend four months, um, once a week doing the bake management. So the first semester, you spend the first four months doing theory, then that theory spot is stopped and the next four months is our, um, bake management. And so every week you will have a four hour class in bake management. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, we have another question here from Marissa. Do students receive their food handler certification or equivalent at the start of the program? Is this something that students must acquire independently? No, it's actually part of the schooling. So, um, Say it's part of our nutrition class. So in the nutrition class, it is set up that you will do the exam. Um, they'll walk you through the questions and all the things that you need to know, and then you will do the exam while you're at school. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Emily, hi. I'm very excited to be in the class this September. What are some tools that are needed for the program? Okay, so Emily, if you go into the... Um, the site where you register for our program. There actually is an equipment list there. The school does do a bag. Um, it is it's a little bit expensive. Now, I will say that I still have my bag from when I went to school over 40 years ago. Um, so I'm still using my tools. So they are an investment, um, but there is a list online in our, in our registration package that tells you everything you will need for school. So it will give you the breakdown of every tool we use in the, in the program. And if it's a tool that isn't in your bag, uh, the school supplies it. So there are things that you might, when you go through your manual say, oh, this, this isn't in my tool bag. That means that we as a school have that piece of equipment for you. That's great. So Emily, just to let you know, I just posted a link in the chat to the program page for that and specifically the tuition and fees section. Um, so I definitely suggest uh, checking that out. That's a new feature on our website page um, where you can get uh, some more information on the costs behind that. We like that. Yeah, it's, it's new. It's been it's been very helpful. Yeah. Um, Another question just came in from Morgan. I would be coming from St. Clair College in the culinary program. I currently have a knife kit as well as my food handler certification. Is this something I'd need to do again or purchase again? Okay, so Morgan, in that list that he just sent the link to, check your kit with the, the list on there. There might be one or two items you have to get that aren't in a culinary kit that are in a pastry kit because they are two different kits but it means you might have to buy four or five items. That's about it. The food handler, what you'd have to do is you check with registration on um, whether or not you have to take the nutrition again. Some courses you can get exempted as long as they align with the same as our outcomes from our programs, but that is done through the registration. They'll help you with that. Nice. That's really, so Catherine, the kit that can be purchased can actually be purchased like by item almost or yes. customized sort of? Yeah. So in there, there is an actual full list of everything they need. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then there, and 
there's a list of what's in the kit and they're identical. So if she already has a kit from St. Clair, it might be just an ice cream scoop that's missing or the rolling pin that's missing cutters or, something. or cutters. And then <laughs> she can actually just open up her kit and compare it to the list and then just purchase individually what it is. We don't care if it doesn't line up to ours perfectly. So if, if the cutters are three inches instead of three and a half inches, it's not that important. Your basic tools are the most important here. Okay, very good to know. Uh, another question from Marissa. Are there any units uh, in this program that teach you how to work with sugar or melted sugar? Um, in this program, we don't anymore. We used to do the whole sugar program, but we found that it was um, too advanced for an eight month program. So um, it's something that like on our, our Saturday clubs and stuff like that, we do the pulled sugar and the blown sugar and things like that, which right now during COVID we can't do. But yeah. when this is over, we would reintroduce those. But those, um, when you have 24 students all doing blown and pulled sugar, it's a little bit dangerous in the lab. So um, we're hoping in years to come to be able to introduce um, other avenues of being able to do, teach those programs. Okay, very good. Because it's, a, because it's a one year program, the focus is on graduating with a skill that you can understand what goes on to produce product, not necessarily um, sugar, sugar and uh, a lot of the stuff with chocolate as well, but sugar specifically, you really won't find that used in the industry. It's more of a, an elaborate showpiece or a decoration piece that people do. It has really nothing to do with the skills in producing bread, producing cakes and pies and pastries and stuff like that. Okay. That's oh, more, right? mm -hmm. So less of, less of a skill for say, a, like a regular bakery, you yeah. might say. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, we do have another question. We, Tristan, uh, of course, very important question. Are you still accepting applications for fall 2021? Yes, definitely. Um, as far as I know, we are. Um, I, I would, yeah, I would think so. I would believe they are. Yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, I, I, I kind of want to add to Tristan's question too. How many um, seats in the program per year? Um, 20, oh, we can do 48 at a time. 48 at a time, okay. We can run two labs. So 24 students per lab mm -hmm. and okay. still be able to give them their social distance space. Okay, awesome. That's good to know. Um, actually, Tristan too, on that program webpage that I shared, um, in the chat, if you go to the availability tab there, it will actually tell you um, sort of what's available. So right now, currently, actually, there's an opening for May 2021, as well as September, January, and January and May 2022 as well. So that's all open currently right now. Okay, so Morgan's question is about the uniforms. Morgan, you, um, your jackets are part of your tuition. So um, you will come in the week of school and they try them on and then it comes branded with the Niagara College on it. So unfortunately, no, you can't wear your St. Clair because you'll be a Niagara College student now. Um, the pants um, are a, um, you get at the bookshop at Niagara College. Those you have to purchase separately from the jackets, but the jackets are included in your tuition. Um, plus you get aprons and rags mm -hmm. um, and that's all included um, too and we give those to you fresh every day your uniforms are laundered at the school and they give you three and every week you get three clean ones back yeah. that's good to know um, you get to choose your classes in august yeah. for now september, for september. For September, because she was asking starting in fall 2021. So yeah, it's usually around the month before the program actually begins. So oh, yeah, in the program, yes, you will. Um, first aid CPR, I'm not sure. About. Um, first aid and CPR are separate, but I know the college offers programs in that. That, but that's not that's not under our umbrella. Um, Yeah, but I know the college does do some, and I think it's at the Welland campus. Yeah, yeah. the college does offer that separately. Yeah. Does do they still offer that during yeah. the whole COVID thing? Um, they With are, the but it's a pro, it's a separate access? course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, do, oh, do you offer? Um, yes, we have a um, 
a full department that does job postings and things like that. And then on our end, anytime um, any of the locations are looking for people, we do uh, make sure that everyone in our department knows that this location is looking for somebody mm -hmm. and we bring it up in class to give everyone the same opportunity to apply for it. But there is a job center in, the, in our college itself and a job board, it's also online. And if you're in the food in, in our end of it, because we are on campus, there actually is job boards um, mm -hmm. throughout the college for you to check on jobs. We're fairly, yeah. we're fairly connected to the industry still too. And actually we, over the last couple of days, all the chefs were emailing each other back and forth as to who's looking for, for employers as well. I mean, employment as well, right? So yeah. yeah. We, Tristan, we also, with employment too, is we're also going to help guide you into not going into a certain job too, because sometimes we, um, as if it's in the Niagara region, both Chef Storm and I have spent many years working in this industry. We, um, if we know that it wouldn't be a successful location for you, our job is also to help guide you into the right employment that you succeed going forward. So, um, Yes, we will help guide you into employment. We will also help you source the right job for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important. So that's the the career and co-op services uh, department. I mean, Tristan, more than anything, your your faculty are wealths of knowledge when it comes to industry connections. Uh, keep that in mind. But that department will help you write a resume. They'll help you prepare for interviews. They'll help you do all kinds of things. And you also have access to uh, job boards where certain positions are offered only to Niagara College graduates as well. So, so a lot of a lot of different options there. I also want to jump back um, and mention, of course, Laura made a good point. Um, is that there's a uh, when choosing your 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 schedule, it may be different than what you might be used to if you've heard about choosing your courses, say for university or something like that. Um, in college, we do we do it by timetable blocks. So, Catherine, do you, does baking pastry arts have the two blocks? We have. Open? Yes, we have first semester and second semester. Right. So they, they, what happens is the students are able to choose one of two blocks in August. And those blocks are a combination of the same courses, but usually at different times. Um, or... oh, in ours, no. Um, in ours, oh. you can choose a teacher. So you can, te you can choose um, this lab or that lab, but they run side by side. So... Um, so like say September, we have two blocks for um, intake in September. You can pick block um, teacher A or teacher B, and then your courses go from there. But because everything else they do is online, they get, they get, they're in the same class, if hmm. that makes sense. Because of COVID, they end up in the same class. But that's actually even before COVID, they do get joined. Yeah, they do they get, get joined together. So they don't, they only get to choose if they want lab A or lab B. And that just means you get a different teacher, but it's actually at the same time. Oh, no, that's good to know. Yeah. So, and then they, and then in December, they will, so say this is the fall intake in December, they will pick their um, teacher again for their second block. Now our January intake, because there was only one, um, our students that are moving forward into the second block at the end of April will end up. They don't, they don't get a choice. This is the schedule that's there. They mm -hmm. just sign up that they're going yeah. to. Okay. And our programs are kind of designed now in four different um, little segments. And if you don't pass one of the segments, but you pass the other one, you can actually flip into it in the springtime. So if in the wintertime something happens and you don't finish it, in the springtime, you can actually retake that class. So, and still continue taking your advance. So it's actually kind of a, a nice system now. How many labs um, are there? Um, three labs a day um, for eight months. So how many labs is that? <laughs> well, it's three labs, yeah, three labs a week, uh, right? Yeah, so that'd be 21 labs, uh, three labs a week times. So that's- There's lots of labs. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty, it sounds like. So it's 12 labs a month yeah. times eight. So yeah. students will spend a majority of their time in labs. Mm -hmm. Have evening night classes. Um, Morgan, right now we have a class that runs, the latest class we have is runs from 1.30 to 6.30. Um, we find that most bakers and pastry chefs are morning people and most jobs that you have is a morning. So we've always as much as possible tried to keep them to morning classes just to get people into that set. But we do have 
Chef Storm and I both are teaching Wednesdays right now from 1.30 to 6.30. And that's the latest. It's also because of buses out there too, getting people back and forth. So the, our classes right now just go till 6.30 um, labs. When can students purchase textbooks, uniforms, pants? Um, most of our, um, right now, the books that you need for your labs, we give you on your first day, so you don't have to purchase them. There are There is a textbook, a textbook for, for the for the theory class there is no textbook for your management nutrition class and, math and, stuff. and nutrition and math that would all be sent to you closer to after you've enrolled and everything on what they need mm -hmm. but from our lab end of it we actually give you the book when you arrive in class on the first morning and so you don't have to worry about that one at all who can i contact you can actually contact me at any point um can you put up my um email um, yeah i'd be happy to you. Um, you can contact me with any questions anytime and I can usually respond to you within 24 hours. Once, once you're registered though, Marissa, and you get your uh, student timetable, it will tell you what textbooks you, you do require. And once you have that information, you can get into contact with the, uh, the campus bookstore and they'll be able to help you out. And some of the books that you can buy, you can buy yeah. online. True. Um, so some of them are actually cheaper on Amazon and that, so, um, you can source it and you can also, there is somewhere in the college now that, um, there is a site and Ryan, I'll try and find it because some students were telling me about it and some students have started on just down gifting their books. Yes. So instead of selling them, they're gifting them forward. So I will actually try and get the, the site for that. And then maybe we can get that posted into our, um, our things so that people are just paying it forward, which is nice. No, for sure. Okay. Keep in mind too, if you purchase a textbook, that textbook is yours forever. I have textbooks when I was an apprentice all those years ago, almost 30 years ago, that are still a good reference to me. So if you do spend the money and purchase a book, it, it's, it's a valuable resource for the rest of your life. Yeah, I always try to share too, when, whenever I'm talking to students, um, just from my own experience, having been a student at Niagara College, um, you know, obviously go to the bookstore and see what kind of books you need, but don't be afraid to search elsewhere, different online retailers and things like that, because oftentimes you may even find that same book for a cheaper price. And so if you are, uh, like Peter said, going to spend the money on the book and keep it anyways, at least maybe you're able to save some money because of course, post-secondary is an expensive endeavor already. So Anywhere you can save a buck is always helpful. Hence the knife kit too. If you can get that list of knives, right? Or the, or the tools you needed, it's, you could very well get it at a much uh, cheaper price than you would by buying it at the bookstore. How will lockdown impact our learning? So basically when we were in lockdown recently, um, Tristan, um, we were still in the labs. We could only have 10 students. So we actually just, um, rearranged our program so that one week if we have 20 students one week 10 students came the next week the other 10 students came so we just ran smaller mm -hmm. classes and um we had to expand it so we had no march break this time so and then we just kind of manipulated um how we could facilitate it and still give you what you needed so if there is another lockdown it just means we go back down to 10 students at this point is that's our knowledge uh, things can change, as you know, because the world keeps changing. But um, if it goes back down to restrictions, now we do wear uh, masks and face shields in the labs. So, um, and that has worked really well. Um, they do not melt when you're standing by the ovens, which is really handy. Um, but there, we've already gone through it. So we've already kind of worked out a lot of the kinks. So there mm -hmm. wouldn't be any problems with you learning. And our management class, our theory class, your math class, your nutrition, they're all online programs and they're asynchronous, aren't they? They are. Yeah. yeah. So um, they're all scheduled in. And so you will meet up on, um, on, Blackboard Collaborative with your instructors and they will do their lesson and then they'll give you your homework. So the only time you'd be on campus if we have another lockdown would be to come in and do a lab because the labs we cannot do online. And that is a plan for the fall. Yeah. yeah, so like I mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation, Tristan, um, I just posted the link again. There's a COVID-19 section of our, of our website that is gonna be re-updated again in May um, once we find out more information about how we're gonna be executing um, on campus learning in the fall. So definitely keep an eye on that. And yes, Emily, we supply your masks every day. So you have to wear a mask into the school 
And then when you arrive into the lab, we give you a college issued one that's disposable and we give you face shields and all of the um, sprays to sanitize your face shields at the end of class and all of that stuff. So that's all um, paid for by the school. The face shield, you get one, you take care of it, you clean it, um, you bring it with you. The um, disposable masks, we give you a clean one every day. Every single day. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. So are there any other questions from the, the attendees? It's been great so far. We've gotten some good ones. <laughs> um, we know what they like. Okay, but we've actually been able to completely, um, we missed one bread week. That was it in our advanced program um, through the pandemic with having to shift everything around just with days. But we have not missed one skill that um, was in the book. And Correct. for cookies, we do chocolate chip, we do shortbread, we do um, empire cookies, biscotti, Linzer cookies. Linzer cookies. So um, a large variety of stuff. So we have not changed anything in the program, even with the pandemic. Um, if anything, we've actually tried to give you guys a little more just because we need it all to stay positive and happy and feel good. So that's awesome. Tristan is very thankful uh, for the information. That's great. The questions so far, everyone have been have been awesome. I believe we've answered 16. It looks like 16 different questions. So well, we want to thank everyone that's joined us today, um, just even for your interest in our program, and we hope you choose it because both Chef Storm and I love teaching it. So we really look forward to um, some of you attending our program. Yeah, no, and Catherine, Peter, honestly, and, and Laura as well, uh, for especially your information in the chat too. Thank you so much for for all of your time, it's been it's been absolutely invaluable. Of course, this session will be recorded and referred back to multiple times, I'm sure. Um, any kind of, I'm not sure on what advice you want us to give you, other than you will have lots of fun if you take our class. <laughs> get to eat really well, and you know, um, lots of chocolate and cookies and butter and sugar and flour, all the best ingredients. Um, yeah, uh, Marissa, if you don't mind, Catherine, I can, I can hop in because Marissa, if, if you, if you know, you want to take baking and pastry arts, that's one of the hardest steps. Um, once you know that kind of from here to when you start the program, now's the time you're going to want to look into things like following up on what delivery will look like in May, or maybe financial aid options, what kind of scholarships and bursaries might be available to you, uh, when the time comes, right. The different things that'll help you, um, just excel as a student, as well as the student services. So like I mentioned, we've got some open sessions uh, to learn more about this different services that exist on campus um, and learning more about that before you get started as a student. I'll actually share, sorry. Uh, sorry, Laura, I'm gonna share the uh, financial aid link too. I can speak to the student services. Um, there are uh, so many services on campus to help students. I put in the chat, every student is supported by an academic advisor um, or an international student advisor. And uh, our role really is to help guide you through your program. Your, um, your faculty will reach out to us when they, um, when they feel that a student might be at risk um, of being successful and then we jump in and we connect students to whether it be our library for peer tutoring um, or um, IT support if there's something going on in the back end with your online learning. We have health, wellness and accessibility to help students. Um, so there's counselors and doctor and learning support strategists. We have our co-op and career services. Um, registrar and enrollment, financial services. So the the, the help on campus is, is endless and, and your academic advisors um, work very closely with your faculty to, um, to uh, help students be successful and connect on campus. We also have great student government and we have an amazing um, uh, engagement team as well and get involved team. So lots of ways to get, um, to get the very most out of your, pro, of your NC experience. Yeah, definitely. And even if you don't choose baking and pastry arts, but you still come to Niagara, 
I got to let you know that as a student at Niagara, I was able to eat much of what baking and pastry art students <laughs> made uh, being on the campus. Uh, they have to test their food somehow, right? So it was pretty, it was pretty great. Actually, Ryan, I have to say I advise in this program and I love the students from baking and culinary because they make a lot of stuff and they, they, they need people to sample it. So I'm, I'm uh, always happy to sample. <laughs> right? Always, no matter what. No, that's, that's my favorite part of the program anyways. No, so thanks again for the great questions. If there's any other last minute questions, we still have nine minutes left technically in this session. Um, so we'll stick around. Uh, we'll be here to, to answer if anybody comes in late, which has happened today. Um, if you have any more questions, but thank you so much uh, attendees. You guys have been fantastic. The question's awesome. And I hope we were able to help you out a bit and make the decision a little clearer. I don't like the silence. <laughs> so I have a question well, just to break the silence um, and you maybe can share with us. What has, what's the most amazing um, thing that students will bake or like something in your, like what do you love to teach? Is it the bread? Is it the cookies? Is it okay. the, the wedding so, cake? So Peter is a chocolate maker. So he he's on a high the whole two weeks. So, so we're in that right now. That's why he's happy. Um, <laughs> He loves the chocolate end. I love the decorating cake end. And then we had Chef Karen who unfortunately left us and she was our bread girl. So she loved bread. So there, it was actually kind of cool because all three of us liked the three different elements of it. But mine is the cakes because with the cakes, even the guy that can't make a flower at the end when they make a flower and think, Ugh, you know, they're looking at thinking it's ugly. We think it's brilliant because flowers look so different. It's, it's that we're in that final part, like we're in the back half of our program. And this is the best part because you've seen someone that from the beginning didn't know how to do something. And all of a sudden now you can see them do something. And it's like, holy cow. I had one international student third or fourth year into it. And honestly, he couldn't bake. And I loved having him. And my goal at the end wasn't to teach him how to bake. It was actually to teach him how to keep his table clean. <laughs> and his last three weeks of school, his partner was like, look at our table, it's so clean. And I thought, I know. And funny enough, he went on in our college and ended up taking, and I can't remember what other program, and he did so well, but his entry into it was our program. And it was, and it was really neat because I remember meeting him at like th three years later at graduation, graduating from another program. He graduated our program. He wasn't a great baker. I would never hire him, but um, it was just the evolution. But from that, he realized that it wasn't what he wanted to do and then took another program with our college that he succeeded and found his career. So sometimes what we do is just an introductory to it. And sometimes we find people that have come into our program that were in journalism or mm -hmm. film and all of a sudden they're in ours and it, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, food, not, not as of right now, Morgan, we have no competitions and um, we can't. And virtual ones, I don't know how you taste it. So I know that there are virtual competitions because I'm part of the Canadian Chefs Association and, and I'm an actual world competition judge um, we can't do them and we can't do pastry competitions other than sculptures right now, mm -hmm. judging them because a, a sculpture I can judge online, but we, um, the other competitions have to be tasted. And at this point there is none in the world. So, um, in the past though, we are very active in, uh, we do all sorts of things. I mean, the, the culinary did the Olympics, right? Yeah. Um, even even community wise, we do cookies for Meals on Wheels. We do all sorts of what were the, some of the other ones? We, well, we so did we things. did um, soups on two empty years, kitchen, yeah, two cook years for Christmas. Sorry. Two, two years ago was the first time we took females to Toronto to eat to the beat, mm -hmm. which is uh, 50 female chefs from across Ontario raised money for support of cancer. So there's an awful lot that we do. We just with COVID can't do anything. So. No, we, used to, we used to do the uh, cake cook-off for the baking uh, trade show in Toronto. Yeah. We had a 10 foot by 10 foot square and you can go up eight feet and we filled every little score. Uh, you know, we, we should have won, but we didn't. But. 
<laughs> I wasn't, a, I, I wasn't a, a member then. You would have won if you had me. We did so. the old lady in the shoe, and the shoe was like eight <laughs> feet tall, and it had all these little, like, people all around, chocolate swing. It, we should have won. Yeah. And if, Fine. sorry, Catherine, uh, Peter, Laura, if you guys don't mind me uh, doing a bit of a shameless plug here, but uh, I'm actually good friends with uh, a woman named Selena Lewis who took the program. Uh, she, yeah. yeah, you remember her. So she graduated a while back um, and I, I shared her Instagram link in the chat for some alumni success. She actually started a, a small business in Niagara called Sweet Geek. Um, and she specializes in, in different cakes and things like that. So if you wanted to check out some of the work that uh, one of the students has, has been able to do and, and make money off of too, is that's a great opportunity. It is. Actually, quite a few of our students, and especially during COVID, because mm -hmm. it seems to have taken off. And I know that because I own a business. It's mm -hmm. our baking end has skyrocketed, and yeah. um, I think it's just because it's 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 almost comfort food. When you stop and think about when I grew up, my grand I lived with my grandmother. We had dessert every every night, and nobody was obese. Um, and we had sugar and all those things. It was just in moderation. And I think that's kind of come back with COVID is that more people are baking, more people, or they're picking up something to enjoy because it makes them feel better. Even yeah. I bake unprofessionally. Yeah. Uh, Chef Eva Cross was telling me about that at SCC. Very cool. Nice. I love making beer bread. So that was my, that was my COVID. I would get different oh, really? beers and make beer bread. So I, uh, it, we actually uh, take the spent grains from the brewery as well and make awesome. bread from yeah. the grains as well. Yeah. So we use their beer and then and the, grains. the grains. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think they're bringing us, um, they're bringing us, uh, what did he tell me that day in the hallway, the beer guys have something else they want us to try. Oh, really? Now we made toffee out of beer once. Remember? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I made a Irish toffee out of the beer. Um, at one of, it was for um, Downing, um, that chef instructor asked us to do it and it, it worked beautifully. So there's a, there's a lot of cross, you know, and then hopefully the cannabis eventually. At we some will, point edibles will be coming into the program yeah. as well, right? Being underage. No, 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 no. You don't get to drink. It. You don't get to drink in our labs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we'd like to, but no, no. <laughs> um, absolutely no drinking. And you have to remember that if you're baking with alcohol, it evaporates. So only yeah. the flavor components stay in. And so as soon as you heat it, it evaporates when mm -hmm. we make truffles. And also, depending on your culture, um, Morgan, we, was it Morgan that asked that or Emily? Yes. Um, we, um, we take it out. So right now I have a student that cannot, um, does not want alcohol in their products. So all of our recipes are designed that you can take it out. So if you don't want it, you don't have it except for the beer in the beer bread, because that's your, but actually you could take it out you could. because you can put water in. Yeah. So you don't have to. So our truffles last week we made, they could take the alcohol out of them. Any of our cakes, the alcohol can come out of we don't use a lot of it, but when we do use it, we have developed a recipe that it doesn't need to be in it. And, and just this semester, I used agar agar because someone couldn't have gelatin. So we work around um, religious restrictions or um, cultural restrictions mm -hmm. as much as we can to make the, the labs friendly for you. Will we get to make sourdough from scratch? Absolutely. Yes, yes you do. Yeah. That's and we, beauty. We make our own starter plus yeah. we have a starter that we've had going for five years five now. years yeah. now yeah so you'll make your own class starter plus um we use one that's five years old that so. class starter is made in the first semester it's treated it's fed it's uh, it's loved like a little baby yeah, it's and your it's baby. used the uh the second semester so it gets right but yeah definitely we do a lot with sourdough yeah that's very cool um it is now 1 30 this is the end of our session today um again Catherine, peter laura you guys have been fantastic this was this was awesome uh thank you so much to the participants your questions were were top notch uh, i hope we were able to answer as many of those as possible i know i shared uh Catherine's email in the chat too so feel free to copy and paste that um but thank you so much everyone for your involvement in this session and i hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and thank you, Ryan, for facilitating this. You made it much, very, very easy for us. Of course. I'm glad it could help. Great. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you. Thank you. Au revoir. Bye, Bye, -bye. everyone.